the opening weekend of the college hockey season, and for the first time this year, we get to see how two teams will handle game two. Tonight, the Clarks and Golden Knights go for the sweep against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And so we welcome you inside the Compton Family Ice Arena alongside Steve Conroy. Tony Simeone, happy to be with you for game two tonight, Steve. I was not here for game one, but you certainly were, and you saw Clarkson get off to a good start. They got the opening goal. They never trailed last night. They picked up the first win of the season. Yeah, a lot of new faces for that team. Actually, a lot of new faces, too, for the Fighting Irish. A number of freshmen making their uh, first appearance on the season. It was a good game, uh, but still, if you're a Fighting Irish fan, the lack of goal scoring has to be a concern. On the other side for Clarkson, man, they got a great performance from Cody Mon. Scored the first two goals of the contest. He comes over for Providence, and he impressed in his Golden Knight debut. He certainly did. The transfer out of Brockville, Ontario, uh, he made quite a statement last night. I like the move here. He kind of slows down. You see the two-on-one, gets himself into that seam, makes sure he can receive that pass, and he makes absolutely no mistake about it, bearing for that very first, uh, that very important first goal. And then the backbreaker, the mistake by the Irish D, he makes absolutely no mistake on the move. See the little stutter step? Really nice move. Fischl almost gets it. But uh, two goals in his first game, two goals all of last year with Providence. So I had an opportunity to talk to him a little earlier. He's really excited about this new opportunity with Clarkson. On the other side for Notre Dame, you mentioned the scoring was not there. But one bright spot is the freshman forward, Danny Nelson. They got a really good outing from him. Six shots. He's a the guy they're expecting to produce as the season goes along. Yeah, you could see the potential in him every time he was on the ice. Something good was happening. He had three shots in the first period. This is to close out the, uh, the first period on the power play. He gets stopped by Austin. Roden, who was outstanding for Clarkson. He shows his physicality, and when he's involved physically, he plays better. Here he is again, getting physical, getting to those tough areas in front of the night. Six shots, as you mentioned, on the night. He was very impressive in his first game for the Fighting Irish. Now, despite Nelson's best efforts, the Irish only managed one goal in the opener. They'll look for more in game two against Clarkson. Coming up next. Austin Roden made his debut last night for the Clarkson Golden Knights. He did not disappoint. 27 saves in game one against the Irish. He gets the win after one year with Providence last season. Played just five games after three years with Omaha prior. Played just 31 games. He comes here to Clarkson, Steve, and really shows out in his first opportunity. He's going to try to own the net this year, and he looked really sharp in game one. Gave himself a great opportunity after game one. Very focused. Uh, didn't overreact to any those shots that's so important and down to the other end let's not forget Ryan Bischel had a pretty solid game himself just allowed two goals he was uh, under pressure a lot in early in the first period through parts of that hockey game uh, and as coach Jeff Jackson said the loss wasn't on him as you saw right there too a couple of guys playing in their fifth year plenty of experience between the pipes on both ends tonight you alluded to the two goals that got past him came on mistakes Bischel the reigning Big Ten goaltender of the year. He owned the net last year for the first time, Steve, in his career. And you know going into this year, he's really even more comfortable in that net. Yeah, and confidence is so important, especially for goaltenders. When you know that net is yours and you know that, hey, I give up a bad goal, I'm not going to get yanked, that goes a long way. And, you know, he can he can concentrate on the other things now. And yeah, we saw that it was a progression all through last year. He just became a better and better goalie as the year went on. See what kind of response Notre Dame has here in night two as Cole Knubel took a spill into the boards there on his opening shift. He's playing with Landon Slaggart, who had the only Irish goal last night. Hands it off for Drew Bavaro, veteran defenseman who came over last year as a transfer, playing his second season with the Irish. One thing I noticed last night, I rewatched the game, where the Irish had a lot of success, making the blue line, backing off the defense, and then just stopping up and finding the trailer, finding that third or fourth guy. Danny Nelson highlighted him in the open. The second round pick of the New York Islanders. Six shots last night in his debut. Really had a good pep in his step. Looked plenty comfortable at the college level in his first game. I was impressed with his physicality. Yeah, he's a big kid. He's 6'2", 212 pounds. And every time he was out there, it seemed like something good was happening. Just fired one off the outside of the cage that time as the puck is spiked up and out towards center ice. Right there is the transfer, Ben Seedham who sends it back through center. Well, the other thing, uh, Tony, we didn't mention about Danny Nelson, he was 9 of 11 in the face-off dot, so he did a real good job in the face-off circle. And 
that can sometimes you know be a problem and Jeff Jackson would be the first to tell you he was concerned that his top two lines were centered by freshmen whether it was Knubel or Danny Nelson and they both afforded themselves very well you know I listened to the post-game press conference of coach Jackson after and he said just, we just couldn't capitalize mm. we had some chances we couldn't finish and he thought that was one of the bigger differences of the game aside from the mistakes that you know the two glaring mistakes the Irish made that ended up being at the back of their net you saw the number there too from Jeff Jackson 574 career wins now bearing down on 600 what he's done here in South Bend has been extremely impressive this now his 19th season he's taken this team to four frozen fours they've not been back there though since 2018 had their NCAA tournament streak that spans since 2017 snapped last year you could hear that talking to him and some of the other guys there's a hunger to get back to the tournament this year I think that really bothered him and, and as you mentioned bothered the team too and that can serve as great motivation Justin Janicki circles the net, sends it out to Jake Boltman, whose shot never got through. Good work that time by Ryan Taylor to get in the shooting lane and block it. And a big hit by Boltman as the puck comes back through center. Puck's turned over. Opportunity for the Golden Knights. Working in was Ellis Rickwood that time, but it swept out into the opposite direction. Tony, you just mentioned the shot didn't get through. Uh, that happened a number of times last night. Officially, they gave the Golden Knights 12 block shots. It's probably closer to 25. You know, sometimes you get in a shooting lane and the guy shoots it wide, so it's not a blocked shot. But right. effectively, that is like blocking a shot. Yeah, they had 12. Notre Dame had 11. Both teams were really willing mm -hmm. to get in the lanes last night. As Henry Nelson, brother of Danny, has the puck, sends it for Brennan Ali, whose backhanded feed went through center, was looking that time for Maddox Fleming, another freshman, comes out to Bavaro, walks oh. his way in, he shoots and scores, but the net was off of its moorings now there's going to be a little bit of a conference because if the golden knights knocked it off its moorings you know I'm gonna get an announcement here i think let's see if they're gonna check it out because if this puck was gonna go in regardless there's no goal in the play the net was off its mooring the face off stays inside now i take that back mm -hmm. they're not gonna they're not gonna huddle and that was knocked off its moorings let's see exactly who knocked it off and you see the Fighting Irish feeding the points an awful lot early in this hockey game. They bring it back to the point. Oh, and the net's off already. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it had happened a long time ago. It was Sigurdsson who, yeah. Yeah. So he went sprawling through, back-checking that time. Puck care, the net came off, and that's why they blew it. And I think the issue was the whistle came a, a little bit later because the officials didn't notice it was off, and of course then exactly. the shot went in. So play continues, approaching just three minutes gone here in the second game. Clarkson, the 3-1 win last night. It was 2-1 before an empty netter. Close, tight battle throughout until the final moments. And the Golden Knights had their first win. They're looking to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since the COVID pandemic. They were slated to make the NCAA tournament before that season was cut short in the spring of 2020. And that would have been a streak of three consecutive tournaments made. They've not been back since. You know, I talked to head coach Casey Jones about that, and he said that really hurt. Uh, they had a lot of guys who ended up turning pro on that team, whether it was Joshua Dunn, who's seen some time with the Columbus Blue Jackets, Nico Sturm mm -hmm. on that team. Uh, he said they were good. They were really trending in the right direction after a pair of tournament appearances, one against or one that featured a matchup and a loss against Notre Dame back in 2019, and then the following season, as with everybody in college hockey, they had it cut short. Landon Slaggart speeds his way in, threw on the brakes near the goal line, and then his pass is intercepted, taken back by Carter Rose. I mentioned it earlier, the Golden Knights, good defensively in their own zone, but they tend to collapse, and what that means is the forwards come down really deep. What that does offensively, it exposes your defenseman, uh, the offensive defenseman, so if the Fighting Irish can push them back, get the pucks back to the point, maybe they can find a way to get some shots through. Shots right now, just one apiece. Four and a half minutes in. As the puck circles the Golden Knight net, sent back out for Romano. Tried to feed one to Eric Ciccolini, the transfer from Michigan, familiar with playing in this building. Had it taken away from him, but it comes back onto the stick of Cody Mons, who scored the two goals that really were the difference last night for the Golden Knights. This shot on Bischel from a wide angle fluttered on him. He couldn't squeeze it cleanly, but it's cleared out to center. Had a chance to talk to Cody Mons before the game. My son played with him in the BCHL with the Victoria Grizzlies. Uh, and he uh, 
He was happy about the way he started. You know, he obviously playing at Providence last year. Maybe didn't get the same kind of opportunity he's getting here, but uh, boy, he made the most of it. How about Mons and then also the goaltender Roden, like we talked about. Two guys that came from Providence and have seen a huge impact in their opening night. And now a penalty coming up after a big hit in the corner. And the officials are going to have to get involved to break it up as well. Yeah, that was Danny Nelson fin finishing his check on McFall. He had a big hit on McFall last night. It was over by the Golden Knights bench. This time it's in the corner. And McFall was just face into the glass. You got to try and hold up. Probably a boarding call. We'll wait for the call. Notre Dame minor penalty boarding. And it's a minor penalty to Danny Nelson. So looks like McFall's okay. Watch in that right corner. McFall goes to get the puck. All Nelson can see are the numbers. And that's when you have to let up. He doesn't. McFall goes down. And the Golden Knights will get their first power play opportunity on the evening. Casey Jones is talking mm -hmm. to the officials right now. I think he wants an explanation as to why they might not look at this further. Mm -hmm. And review it for possibly a major or a misconduct. Saw a couple boarding calls last night. In fact, that's the reason that Clarkson's without one of their best players. Art Martino led mm -hmm. them in points last year. He's not in the lineup tonight because of a boarding call that was a penalty against Notre Dame, and they're without one of their best players as a result tonight. Yeah, I believe that was Jake Boltman who uh, finished his check on Martino, and Martino ended up finishing that shift, but then he never saw another shift after that. So, yeah, that's a big loss for them. And you think about it, Martino out of the lineup, Goslin, who they expected big things from, out of the lineup, and Moberg, the kid from Sweden, still... Uh, He's kind of in limbo because he played some semi-professional hockey last year, and the NCAA is still waiting to make a decision on his status. You mentioned Goslin; He had 33 points last year. Marquino had 38. I mean, these are two guys that you're slating yeah. for a close to a point per game that are not in the lineup tonight. As the Golden Knights are on the puck quickly, but they're offside here. Let's go back to last night, Steve, and just show you that hit on Martino. Uh, it happened along the end boards here, a boarding call that went against Notre Dame. Yeah, and again, you know, guy's two feet away from the glass, basically with his numbers too. You've got to let up. And Jake Moldman, you know, you're taught to finish your check, but at some point you got to just hold off a little bit. Martino did stay on the ice for the rest of that shift, but we didn't see him again afterwards. And, you know, Casey Jones, I talked to him before the game. He said he was real happy with the compete level. He's obviously not happy without Ayrton Martino or Goslin. But uh, this team has a seems to find a way of... of Scoring goals regardless of who's in the lineup. They enter the zone here with speed. Last night did not score on the power play. They were 0 for 3. Interesting to watch Notre Dame's penalty kill throughout the night as Taylor has the puck. Walks his way in with space. Fires a shot and Bischel maybe just got a touch of it to deflect it wide. Notre Dame had the 59th ranked penalty kill in the country last year. Only killed three quarters. Allowed 31 power play goals a season after being the number one penalty killing unit in the country. Really didn't make a lot of sense last year. They were clean last night, and so far through the first minute plus of this power play for Clarkson, they've looked sharp as well. It's funny how that works sometimes. Uh, and obviously, there was a few guys who, who had left the team and were key penalty killers, but not a huge change in personnel. Hunter Strand has a shorthanded opportunity. Takes it in one on two. Now he tries to kill some time, but he lost the puck and back comes Clarkson the opposite way. Jesse Tucker, the transfer from Michigan State, gained the line, drove it in, and then the Irish cleared out. Bischel was able to do so. Strand was in pursuit again. Good shift for Hunter Strand on the penalty kill. Does well to kill some time off the clock. And a good job by Ryan Bischel. We saw him very active coming out of his crease last night, whether it was passing his defenseman or getting it out of danger, and he's almost like a third defenseman back there. It's a huge advantage for any team. Here's Dustin McFall, captain for the Golden Knights. Gets it up ahead to Charlie Russell. Freshman forward, gets it in deep, and Bischel once again will come from his crease, play it behind his net, and hand it off to Drew Bavaro. Bavaro, preseason, second team, all Big Ten. At 19 points last year as a defenseman. As the Irish have the puck on the move, big shot that time on Roden that he's able to shrug off. Michael Mastro Domenico, the defenseman, comes down for it. 
sends it out, out back high. Bavaro pumps, pulls his way through the slot, back for Mastro Domenico, whose shot goes well wide and comes back into the Irish zone. I like the thought process there, Bavaro. You know, everyone was keyed on him. It looked like he might shoot after he made a couple of nice little jukes, but he dished it off to Mastro Domenico, who I don't think it was in his wheelhouse. Looked like he was a little off balance to put it three feet wide. Puck goes into the corner now. You've got a trio of freshmen on the ice here. 13, 14, and 15. How about that? Yeah. Brennan Ali, Maddox Fleming, and then Jaden Davis all get a shift here as it comes out to the freshman defenseman, Paul Fisher. Should mention Tyler Carpenter, the lone lineup change for the Fighting Irish. He comes out. Jaden Davis goes in. Here's Ali going to work as this freshman line spent some time in the offensive zone. They sent it for Boltman that time. Lost control. It's taken right back. And here comes Ryan Richardson for the Knights. He'll throw on the brakes across the blue line, then have it poked off his stick and out to center. You mentioned the three freshmen on that line. Well, watch this. McFall sends one up front. And a shot from Gardner that backhands wide of the net. Back out the other way. Here come the Irish. Fisher on the move, and the Ooh. Irish go offside. He and Ali a little bit eager as they cross the blue line. Well, the Fighting Irish having some puck possession inside the blue line. I like the patience here from Bavaro. Head up, fake, little head fake, the juke, and then passes it off. But unfortunately, Master Domenico did not get that one cleanly. And then a little later from in close, a high riser. That's from Gardner, the freshman for Clarkson. Probably put it about a foot wide. Steve, I want to go back to that first replay from Bavaro to Master Domenico. Seems like Notre Dame needs a little bit more of that offensively. Just 2.3 goals per game last year. Did not score at the rate I think that they want to mm. or anybody wants to. Playmaking there, it didn't result in a goal, but it just seemed like that's something Bavaro can provide them here in his second year with the team. Well, to underline your point, just take a look at the wins last year. The goals they scored over 3, 3.2. In the losses, they only managed 1.3. The goals against, yeah, yeah, they were pretty good defensively at 1.4 against it, and the losses almost gave up four. So it's funny. We talked to both coaches earlier this week, and, and especially Casey Jones, he said it's a race to three. If you can get the three goals, chances are you're going to win the hockey game. So, uh, you know, I've heard it said in the NHL a lot, too. It's a 3-2 it's a league, and most games are decided yeah. by a goal, and the team that gets the three typically wins. And you saw there, too, Notre Dame was 9-0-2 when they got to three. As the puck is in the Irish zone, Ciccolini shot. Did not get through. Puck not cleared yet. Mons has it. Back for Ciccolini. And he'll backhand it out to the neutral zone. But Notre Dame only got to three goals 11 times last year. That's yeah. only one third of the time. Yeah. You know they want to get to that number more than 11 times this season. Well, exactly. And especially, you know, last year, the firepower they had, um, they were stymied. They, they just could not buy a goal at times. And to underline that, you had a goaltender with a 931 save percentage who went 16... I think it was 16, 16, and 2. Yeah. So, you know, a 931 save percentage, you should be, you know, have 25, 25 wins under your belt. Yeah, Bischel was the Big Ten goaltender of the year last year. After a stellar season, first time he owned the net after splitting some time in consecutive years. More than halfway gone here in the opening period. It's been some action, but only five total shots so far. Clarkson with three. Notre Dame with two as the Irish captain, Landon Slagger, senior, has it. Knubel fires a shot, and Roden is able to make the save. Quickly cover up a loose puck and freeze play. You see that top-notch shot from Knubel just jumped off his hockey stick. Well, Cole Knubel, freshman, has already made an impact. This shot on Roden couldn't get by him, but it put the pressure on. Still scoreless in the opening period. No score in the opening period between Notre Dame and Clarkson. There's the Golden Knight goaltender, Austin Roden. One of five transfers for this Clarkson roster. A couple guys from Providence we've talked about. You see also Tucker and Ciccolini, guys that have played in the Big Ten, played in this building, Steve. They didn't just bring in transfers. They brought in transfers with experience that know what it takes to win at this level. Yeah, and I talked to head coach Casey Jones about that, and he really liked the games from Tucker and Ciccolini up front. Cody Mons obviously had the two goals. Those are the three forward transfers, so they were very, very good. Jack Judson was great on the back end also. So, But, you know, when he talked to him during the week, he said that, you know, sometimes those transfer guys, they think their ex-coach had it in for them, and that, <laughs> you know, it, it was all on them, nothing to do with 
uh, the, the coach, nothing to do with their play. And right. He stresses accountability. And he said, listen, you guys are getting a second opportunity. Make the most of it. Uh, because if you keep doing the same things, chances are you might end up, you know, in the same situation. I thought what he said was great. He said when you transfer, you have to do some self-reflection so you don't miss your second opportunity. Yeah. And that's what he was saying is a lot of these guys, when they want to transfer, and the portals change things, right? You can get in and get out quicker, maybe make a move. And he said when he talks to guys that come in, he doesn't want necessarily someone to show up and just say, coming here is going to fix everything, as the one-timer did not get through that time by Moynihan. And he wants those guys to think, hey, i got to make a change, too, as I make this next step in my career. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've kind of seen it. I, I looked at Jesse Tucker. He, he's probably lost about 5 to 10 pounds that he played at last year at Michigan State. And I think maybe that was one of the knocks on him. He got in, be get in better shape. Uh, Knubel trying to take advantage of a lost stick this time from Taylor, who then goes down to the ice, sliding to break that one up. Great effort by Trey Taylor without his stick to break up an opportunity for Notre Dame. And now the play is blown dead. Really good job by Trey Taylor. In fact, when we talked to Coach Jones about some of the guys we should keep an eye on, he mentioned Taylor, who's a sophomore this year. He said he would probably take that next step. And the sophomore, even though he doesn't have a stick, watch the effort to get back. He kicks it with his skate, and then he dives to make sure that he can block that partial shot from Moynihan. He's a sophomore that head coach Casey Jones said they're looking for a real big jump from him in year two. And that was great effort without a stick there. Good size, too. You know, the sophomore, 6'2", 190 pounds. Jaden Davis looking ahead for Kalen Taylor. No relation as the puck comes out through center. Barkholz drops it back for Jack Judson. He's a transfer from Arizona State. Played four seasons there, 125 games mm. with the Sun Devils. As this puck is too long, it's another one of those guys that has a ton of experience that comes to join this Clarkson roster. You look at uh, the five transfers. They've got three rookies. That's eight new faces in the lineup. But then again, you look at the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Tonight, they have got eight freshmen in yeah. the lineup. Eight freshmen dressed and playing. That's a big question for this team this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, how are these freshmen going to come in? We talked about Nelson at the start of the show. Saw that all freshman line as well as Ryan mm -hmm. Seedham, a veteran who comes over from Harvard, has the puck. But the real question is, how are they going to produce? I think offensively, Steve, is the question, too. Last year, as you mentioned, they're looking for more offense, and there's plenty of freshmen in that forward rotation right oh, now. Six of the 12 forwards are freshmen, so uh, they played very well last night, but it's a long year, and let's see how it keeps grinding, how it keeps going. But uh, we mentioned Danny Nelson already. That Knubel was really good. And they got two freshmen centering the top two lines. Rare you see that from a Jeff Jackson team as Ryan Seedham tries to get it out of his own zone. Puck comes towards the line, and it is cleared out by Danny Nelson. Off for Grant Silinoff, looking for Trevor Janicki. Didn't get the puck. Silinoff back for it. An arm is up for a penalty, and the Irish are going to get a chance to go on the power play. Yeah, it looks like it was a hooking from behind, just as Janicki was trying to get to that puck. Whether Janicki or Silinoff trying to get to that loose puck. Let's hear for the official call. Clarkson, minor penalty, 16, hooking. And that's going against Gardner, the six foot five inch freshman. He was trying to get back. Silinoff feeds it through. Oh, yeah, Silinoff, who follows up his pass, tried to get to it. And oh, it was Gardner on Trevor Janicki. So he takes him out of the play with a hook. And the Fighting Irish back to the power play. Chance for Notre Dame to go on the advantage for the first time. And as you see, Gardner sitting. There were seven total penalties last night. These teams combined to go 0 for 7 on the power play. See if anybody can break through tonight in game two. Last season, Notre Dame was just shy of 21%. You see it right there. And Clarkson, middle of the pack in the country with the kill at 81%. Bavaro carries it in, shoots, deflected by Slaggart and Roden with a nice glove to stop that one. Quick reflexes. Yeah, I like that play. Bavaro made the line, didn't have a lot of help, so he slowed things down. He waited for some reinforcements and then saw Slagger in front of the net, just threw it there. And as you mentioned, Tony, good pickup. The tip right into the glove of Austin Roden. 
Landon Slager had the only goal last night for Notre Dame. If there was another bright spot, it's the fact they got Landon Slager on the score sheet early. It was puzzling that he only had seven goals last season, Steve. This is a guy, Landon Slager, who as a senior, I think he really seems poised for a big-time year for Notre Dame. Yeah, he's he's put some pressure on himself. He's, he's put the time in in the workout room, in the weight room. Um, and, you know, one thing he talked about in his press conference earlier was he wants to get to those tough areas to score goals. And you got to pay a price to get to the front of the net to get to those tight areas. But, you know, he's been willing to do that early in this season. He's the captain, and he's got the puck now. Takes it behind the net. Slagger out for Bavaro. Pumps on the one-timer. Now wrists one through. Roden makes the save. And the puck rolls towards the corner. That's too bad. That rebound just ended up behind Knubel. He would have been able to get to it. He would have had a partially open net. Mm. Puck went under the stick that time of Janicki. Not out. Moynihan working along the wall. And then it's backhanded into the Irish zone. Now one thing the Irish early in the game yesterday, their first two power plays, did not shoot the puck enough. The next two power plays shot the puck with a lot more frequency and then we're seeing here on their first power play tonight. Just get it back to the point. Don't look for that extra pass. Don't look for the pretty play. Just get it to the net and look for rebounds. Here's Nelson. 6'2", 212 pound freshman. Skates in to the offensive end. Tried to spin and feed a pass that didn't get to its intended target but Hunter Strand's right there in the corner to settle it down as the Irish look to set the power play with the final 10 seconds. Seedham. Off for Fleming. Now Strand behind the net. Sends it to Nelson. Back for Seedham. One-timer deflected wide, and Nelson has the puck. Clarkson's back to full strength as the penalty's expired. Zach Pluszynski off the bench for Notre Dame. Defenseman sends it that time for Strand, whose shot went wide of the cage. He gathers his own rebound, though and goes back to work. Pluszynski back door looking that time for an open Nelson, but the puck deflected up high and up onto the stick of Janicki. That was a good stick by Tucker. Just one hand on his stick, but that was a wide open fighting Irish player off to the side of the net. Great shift from Notre Dame here at the end of the power play and now five on five, still going to work in the Golden Knight zone. Puck is cleared towards the line and now out to center ice. Clarkson needed to get it out of their end, and they do. And they can get some fresh bodies as Sigurdsson shoots one onto Bischel. He'll glove it and stop play. You know, some good pressure from the Fighting Irish, not only during the power play, but then after the power play. And uh, if not for a really active and good stick from Jesse Tucker, they might have had another real good look in close. Now, when you're, when you're struggling to score goals, you, you, you got to... Stop thinking about being fancy, picking corners, just get the puck to the net, get some ugly goals, and then when you score some, you know, lucky goals, ugly goals, and all of a sudden the other goals start to come in. It gives you some confidence, and then you can start making plays. But if you're struggling right off the hop, you know, just get the puck to the net and get bodies to the net. This is a nice and call that'll bring the puck back into the Irish zone. 357 left in the opening period. Shots right now 6-4 in favor of Notre Dame. Talking to some of the players after this game, Clarkson will head halfway home to Potsdam. We're going to spend the night in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, probably should get there in about five hours. So they figured it'll be close to midnight, possibly 11, 11.30. And then uh, wake up tomorrow and make the trip back to Potsdam, upstate New York. It was a big win for them last night. They figured they could get another one tonight, pick up two early road wins before a daunting ECAC schedule when they get into conference play later this year. It'd be a big way to start their season. That is a strong conference. Oh. Now, Quinnipiac, obviously, last year, maybe surprising some people when in the, uh, the championship, the NCAA championship. Yeah, Quinnipiac picked to finish first after that title victory last night though lost to Boston College and then you've got Cornell and Harvard and then Clarkson that top four is formidable for the ECAC this puck up along the wall Rickwood's there almost gave it away Canuba was bearing down looking to intercept that time but Kalen Taylor's able to send it off the wall and out here's Bavaro has looked really sharp here in the opening period for Notre Dame Skates the puck in, carries it, and lost it for a moment, but Knubel's right there to take it back and stop up in the corner. Back for Bavaro. <laughs> Again, stick handles his way. 
pirouettes at the circle and sends it across for a one-timer. That came off the stick of Fisher, didn't get through. Spiked out through center, back into the Irish zone. Here's Taylor. Stops up, fanned on a pass, tried to center a feed. It's loose at the top of the paint, and the puck trickles just wide. Good job by Knubel to come back. Had he not, there was an opportunity there for a Golden Knights player to possibly punch that in. And Rickwood was sitting close to the net. Ultimately, though, after the fan pass, took them out of sync. Here's Nelson. Carries it into the corner. Sends a feed through traffic that Trevor Janicki tracks down. Fifth-year senior for Notre Dame. Stops up. Sends it across. Off the wall for Michael Mastro Domenico. He recovers. <laughs> Looking back for Janicki. His stick couldn't get to the puck. And now here comes Bargholtz across the line. Sends it back for Taylor, who's shot. Goes wide of the net, and Seedham will settle the puck down. This is kind of some herky-jerky action on both sides. Now a turnover, Bergholtz, his shot just goes wide. And Trevor Janicki, a no-look backhand pass off the half wall. That normally is not a good idea. It ended up right on the stick of Clarkson, and an opportunity for them in the offensive zone. Last couple minutes, Steve, both teams looked like they just wanted to give the opposition the puck in their own end. And now play is going to stop after it's played with a hand pass. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, sometimes when you turn the puck over, it's okay as long as you get on your horse and you get back. And that's exactly what Knubel does. Watch him here. Had he not taken that extra stride, you mentioned Rickwood would have had a real good look right in front of the net. And then just about 10 seconds ago, the turnover by Janicki. Uh, maybe that was a shot wide. I thought... The goaltender, Bischel, maybe got a piece of it, but, you know, a lot of coaches will tell you, if you're making a backhand pass, you got to make sure 100% you know exactly where the guy is and it's not going to get picked off. And unfortunately, Janicki was on the backhand, and sometimes you don't see the guy taking the puck. That last look you had at that Bargholds opportunity, that's one of the best chances anybody's had all night off that turnover. Just, like you said, maybe missed the frame entirely. Well, that was about a minute or two where it seemed like both teams gave the puck away in opportune spots. It's one thing about shots on that, and right now Clarkson only has four, but they've missed the net three times. And you know, sometimes I wish they would maybe keep track of missed shots. You know, because technically, even if you hit the post, it's not a shot on that. <laughs> right. A little bit more than a minute to go here in the opening period. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. Game two of the opening weekend series between the Irish. And the Golden Knights. That shot did not get through. Jack Judson's able to grab it at the blue line, send it towards Bischel, and he'll think better of playing it. Melt it down for another faceoff. You, know, you might be surprised to hear that Ryan Bischel is just six feet one inch tall because he, he seems a lot bigger than he that. He does, yeah. And, and he plays big in the net, and that's a good sign. I mean, that's typically a sign a goaltender, you know, is control. And, and he's playing confidently. And Jesse Tucker getting a roughing call. I think it's offsetting. I think they're going to send Carter Slagger, too, of all people, the freshman. So we will see some four on four hockey, which and Carter Slagger having some words with Jesse Tucker, but Jesse Tucker not really paying attention to the rookie, the freshman, I should say. <laughs> and four on four hockey, a little more open ice. And we'll see some speed and talent come to the forefront. Mm. Clean win out to McFall. Trey Taylor now. Sophomore takes it below the goal line. See them working on him. As the puck is sent right back around. Back for Anthony Romano. Senior had 15 goals last season. He has the puck again being worked on by the freshman Danny Nelson. Back for Taylor, Seedham throws a check on him, allows time for Nelson to corral the puck and skate it out through center ice. Drops it off for Janicki, final 20 seconds of the period. Trevor Janicki's shot did not get through. Nelson gets it back, holds onto the puck, and drops it back to the blue line for Seedham. Right back to Nelson, 10 seconds, plays it through his legs, fires a shot that ricocheted just wide. Janicki, backhanded feed, Seedham shooting, looking for a deflection, would not go. Puzinski's got it mm. as the clock winds down. What a nice move by Danny Nelson. Put it through the legs of Ciccolini, then the little draw play 
The curl and drag unfortunately shot it just a little bit wide. Strong finish there by the Irish. Eventful 20 seconds, but it doesn't result in a goal on either side. Well, coming up at the intermission, get a chance to hear from the pro football talk guys as they preview tonight's Sunday night football game between the Niners and the Cowboys. And we'll then recap the opening period between Notre Dame and Clarkson. 20 minutes in the books between the Irish and the Golden Knights. No goals, but plenty of pushing and shoving. It's what you expect in college hockey on night two. Back with more after this. Almost set for the second period between Notre Dame and Clarkson. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy on this Sunday evening in South Bend. This is the challenge, Steve, of every college program. you got to always find a way to replace the guys you lost last year. Of course, you have freshmen that come in, but also some additions to the transfer portal. You're looking at Carter Slagger, the last name, of course, familiar to Irish fans. He's going to be in the box to start the period, but those are the guys they brought in this year that they're hoping can make a real impact right away. Well, and you think about it, too. So you've got eight freshmen here playing tonight. In three years, that these freshmen are still around, I mean, that'll be a formidable team. Yeah. Uh, and you're hoping they all stick around and there's another one of those freshmen Nicole Knubel who you know he's getting some really good opportunities here playing center on that first line and you know, we've seen him on the power play and this is just invaluable experience for them going forward four on four to start the period with a clean sheet and this icing call goes down and that'll give Clarkson a chance in their own zone saw Landon Slagger on the ice as well the captain for this team there is associate head coach Andy Slagger I mean his oldest son Graham played here was a captain Landon's now a captain you saw Carter who's now a freshman uh, the Slagger family they've done a ton for South Bend and Notre Dame hockey can you believe it's his 30th year Whew. on the coaching staff for the Fighting Irish and of course he played for the Fighting Irish Played under Lefty Smith, and I know you weren't around when Lefty Smith was coaching, but <laughs> Lefty, Smith, uh, Lefty Smith, a legendary coach uh, here with the Fighting Irish. Yeah, he, I, I like what Jeff Jackson, too, says about Andy Slaggard. Even though he's not behind the bench, he's a life coach to a lot of these kids, mm. and uh, that goes a long way in their maturation from, you know, teenagers to young men. Here's his son, Landon, working yeah. his way in, has the puck, senior now, sends it off for Zach Pluszynski, who shot just goes over and comes back out to center. Little thing, but a big thing. When Pluszynski got that puck, he should have shot it right away. Mm. He cradled it, he moved it, and then all of a sudden, I think it was Noah Beck who ended up deflecting that. So it's not a shot on net, but if you get it and you shoot it right away, it might not have the velocity you want, but it's going to surprise the goalie. Mastro Domenico does get this shot on net. It's fought off quickly that time by Roden. No rebound opportunity with anybody in tight, but Master Domenico tests Roden. Now a backhanded shot by Taylor is handled with Velcro by Bischel. <laughs> well, that's a strength of his, rebound control. You know, earlier I talked about Pluszynski. Now, Pluszynski, now watch him get this pass, and he handles it, and he skates with it, and he moves, and then that allows the defender to get his stick in there. Now. Listen, it might not have been where he wanted it, but if you shoot it right away, it's that element of surprise. I, I think you're going to do a lot better than hanging on to it an extra couple seconds. And you could see, too, as you pointed out, Steve, even with that delay, Roden was still coming over. So imagine if he did shoot it that split second earlier. Like you said, he was in no position to make a stop. Good block there by Danny Nelson. Yeah, here he comes. Oh. Centers a feed this time. Was looking for Silinoff. Didn't connect with him, but he's right back after the puck as it's loose in the slot. And now it does come out to center before Bavaro lays a hit that time on George Granis. Granis was not in the lineup last night. He kind of takes the place of Martino. Now a chance Ooh. bearing down that time. Granis fires off the pad of Bischel. He's back to it as Beck winds one up from the blue line. And it ricochets well wide towards the corner. Ellis Rickwood has it for Clarkson in the corner. Puck is swept back into the neutral zone where Beck settles it for the Golden Knights. Sends it for Trey Taylor, gets it right back, skates in and shoots in deep. Taylor's back for it. Sends it down for Barkholtz. Support provided that time by Charlie Russell, the freshman forward. Around it goes for Sigurdsson. Comes out for Carter Slagger. Off for Hunter Strand, who takes a hit up along the wall. Good work by the captain, Dustin McFall, to send it to Russell. And now it's out through center 
for the Golden Knights to make their way into the Irish zone. There's Paul Fisher. Puck taken back by Clarkson, and they go to work again. Sigurdsson behind the net being worked on by Fisher. Good work by Jake Boltman that time to force Russell out towards the line. Then a feed down low onto the stick of Strand. Sends it through center for Justin Janicki. Irish make a change behind the play as the puck rolls onto the stick of Jack Judson, the transfer from Arizona State. Boltman takes a shrug, couldn't get it out. Ciccolini sends it down low. Here's Romano circling and firing a shot that Bischel fends off, and then a spill around the net forces it to come off its moorings. You know, that play all started with Jack Judson deep in his own zone, and I call it punting the puck, just flipping it, the hoister, and then all of a sudden they get a couple good looks. Now it ends up back behind the net. Now Ciccolini comes out front, and then the net eventually gets knocked off its moorings, but... You know, at first look, I thought this went off the post. It went off, uh, maybe it was Bick Bischel in front of the net. And it may have caught a piece, though, there, Steve. When I saw it that second time, it was hard to tell for sure. It's a lot closer than I thought when I saw it the second time. But I'll go back to the, to the breakout that started. It was the high hoister, and you get funny bounces. And as a defenseman, I can tell you, you just want to keep backing up. You, you don't want it to short hop you. Uh, you don't want to glove it down and glove it right to the guy coming into your uh, face. So, uh, yeah, I, I think you'll see teams. I know they're using it a lot more now in the NHL. I was going to ask about that. You see it more and more often. And as you said, you played this game for a long time in the NHL. I can just hear the kind of the fear in your voice about the bouncing puck backing up. You don't know what it's going to do, right? Yeah, it's, it's almost like you give it to them to get it back because it is like a punt. Uh, but it's tough for a defenseman who's backing up to play it cleanly. It could bounce on you, and if you glove it, the guy could pick your pocket. So a number of things can happen. I like the play. Jaden Davis is looking to make a move into the night's end. Lost his edge. Puck squirts free back into the Irish zone where Zach Pluszynski is waiting. He fans on his pass. I've seen a couple fan passes on both sides tonight. As Fleming carries into the offensive zone. This is that all-freshman lineup of Ali, Fleming, and Davis getting some run here in game two. Davis has the puck, fires oh. a no-look shot, and he scores! What a finish by the freshman! Was looking 90 degrees in the opposite direction, and he buried it. Jaden Davis, the Calgary native. I thought he'd been tripped the last time he was down the ice, but watch him get the puck here, right at the faceoff dot. And that's an excellent shot. He goes short side, the glove side on the netminder. And didn't have a lot of room up there. You know, Roden's a big guy. He goes down into that butterfly. This will be an excellent angle. Right on the faceoff dot. Look at that square. Maybe six inches by six inches. Davis finds it. And he gives Notre Dame their first lead of the weekend. I mean, he did not pick his corner until the final second, Steve. He was looking the other direction and then turned. How about that shot for the freshman in his first career game? Well, he had a pretty good year last year with the Green Bay Gamblers of the USHL. And he's made the most of his first appearance here with the Fighting Irish. Irish have their first lead of the weekend. And now a palpable pep in their step as Knubel sends one off the wall and it comes back out the other direction. This puck is too strong. It's going to be an icing call that brings it back in the other direction for Notre Dame. Well, that'll happen a lot, you know. The freshman gets a goal. The bench gets energized. They're all standing up. They're feeling good about themselves. And now the fans are into it, too. Yeah. yeah. You get the fans in this building and the band going. Uh, you know. <laughs> That's almost like a goal per game. If, if you can get the fans into it, the band into it, that's a huge advantage. Off the faceoff, Bavaro manages to get a shot through. Roden is able to stop it and keep it out. Puck is swept out to the neutral zone before it's driven back into the Irish end. This will be another icing infraction. Look at those numbers, Steve. We talked a lot about how good Notre Dame was last year when they got to three goals, but how about when they get the first one 
they're so good at playing with a lead traditionally yeah. here in South Bend. Yeah, they're good defensively. They know how to shut it down. Jeff Jackson and his coaching staff are really good at protecting leads. And yeah, you get the first goal. Now the other team's got to get at least two to win. Off the faceoff, Henry Nelson shoots one wide. Silinoff is onto the puck, though. Drops it off for Janicki. So last night it was Clarkson that gathered the opening tally. Irish had to play from behind. Now the script has been flipped. We'll see how the Golden Knights respond and see how Notre Dame plays with the lead. It wasn't until an empty netter last night that Clarkson had a two-goal lead as Janicki works his way in and Roden makes a big-time stop to keep it at a one-goal game. I like that play by Trevor Janicki because he had his head up the whole way and as a defender you think okay he's going to pass he's he's not really looking to shoot and then right in the middle of a stick handle he ends up firing the puck head up head up and all of a sudden he tees it up to shoot it now that's hard to do when you're offside because you're presenting the puck the puck's to the inside so as a defenseman you know it's a little easier to get a stick on it but Janicki made a real good uh, made a real good effort there making sure the shot didn't get deflected or blocked. Trevor Janicki in his fifth season with Notre Dame. Last year, just eight goals. Had 15 a couple years back. He seems like a guy they've got to get back into double figures in goal scoring. Too much offensive talent probably to be stuck on eight goals again in his fifth campaign. We were talking to Jeff Jackson about Trevor Janicki's game, and he said he's just so good along the walls. Very rarely does he get beat. You know, he manhandles guys at times in those areas, and then he'll get to the front of the net, so... You know, all those things add up to, you know, typically a guy who's going to score 15, 20 goals. Here's his younger brother, Justin Janicki. Draft pick of the Seattle Kraken had it for a moment. Tried to drop it off for Carter Slager. Intercepted, and back come the Golden Knights. Wide angle attempt that time from Granis came loose. Now a chance for Bargholz to tie the score, and it deflects up high and out of play. I think it was Hunter Strand who slid across to partially deflect that. And, you know, it all came off a Justin Janicki turnover just inside the blue line, the offensive blue line. And that, it coaches will tell you, the worst place to turn a puck over. Watch number 10 here, the turnover Bargholz. And, yeah, that went off the shaft of his stick. Watch him come in, and he leads with his stick. He slides in, and just, oh, wow, just off the shaft of that stick, which is only about three-quarters of an inch wide, off the stick and up into the stands. Strand is the third-line center for Notre Dame. I think he's had a really good game so far tonight. He's been all over the place for the Irish. Played well last night, had some opportunities, just couldn't finish, so... You know, he's the only centerman, really, in tonight's game. They're, they've got three freshman centermen aside from Strand, so he's the only one with some experience back there at the center ice position. A giveaway again, it's Bargholz with the puck, backhanding one towards net. Rose is there in the corner, send it right back down low, looking that time for Russell, but the puck jumped over his stick. Now Paul Fisher battling with Russell in the corner. A couple of freshmen. Fisher had a rough debut last night. A couple of giveaways as a defenseman that led to both of the Clarkson goals. They get it up for Ali. Brennan Ali circles, fires, and it's just kicked wide. The freshman line who has the opening tally for Notre Dame with another good shift. Nice patience there from Ali. Just changed his angle and the save right at the last second by Roden. You know, four freshmen on the ice right now for the uh, Fighting Irish. Another freshman line out here for Clarkson as well. Ciccolini, a veteran, transfer from Michigan shot. Didn't get through. Romano now with time and space. He'll wind it up. Bischel makes the save. It ricochets towards the corner where Ali is battling with Taylor up along the wall. Now Jake Boltman can't get it out. Send it off the wall, but it's held in at the line by Ciccolini. His shot that time towards Bischel is kicked up into the netting, and that will stop play. Smart play by Bischel. You know, he realized he was going to wedge that into the netting, and that's exactly what they did to get the whistle. They needed it. Four freshmen on the ice for Notre Dame. Down to the other end, Ali. I like the patience here. He fakes, he dips, he gets to a better shooting position, and then right at the last second, it looks like Roden gets his right leg on it. A little bit of traffic in front. Yeah, right off the right pad. But Ali, like the shifty moves, a couple of head fakes. Drifts to the middle of the ice. That's a better shooting area. And then unleashed one on Roden. We've talked a lot about Nelson and Knubel, the freshman centers at the first and second lines for Notre Dame. If they can get production like they've had here in the second period from an all-freshman fourth line, Steve, that's going to do 
wonders for them this season as Silinov works his way in and shoots a puck wide. There's a backhand out front. Bavaro holds and fires the puck up and out of play. And he's upset with that. I, I like the decision, though, because I think if he shot it right away, he might have got blocked. So he thought, I'll bring it to the middle of the ice. He did, and I don't know if it was Taylor who ended up getting a stick on that, but it did not get through. You know, Roden didn't really talk about him a heck of a lot last night, but he made some really good stops in that second and third period to keep his team, when it was tied, to keep it tied, and then to, to preserve the lead in the third. We talk about it so often, too. It seems like right now is when you need your goaltender most if you're Clarkson, right, mm -hmm. Steve? Can you keep it within one and give the guys in front of you a chance to tie the score? Yeah, and here's a guy who's coming off a season where he had an 870 save percentage. That's right. Just stopping 87% of the shots fired his way, which is not real good. But the year before, he was around 918, so he wanted a bounce back year, and you know, so far he's gotten it. There's Patrick Moynihan, 18 and white, former teammate of Roden at Providence. Three former Friars on the ice tonight. Two for Clarkson. And one in Moynihan playing his first season with the Irish as this puck is tipped by Knubel in deep. Clarkson will have to play it in their own zone. Jack Judson will carry it out of his own end. Looking to gain the center line. And then that puck is tipped <laughs> towards the bench. The play was blown dead, but the entire Clarkson bench reacted. I don't think they saw it come into their zone, but the whistle blew, and that'll stop play nonetheless. Well, an opportunity for Clarkson. They won the first game. They're hoping to get some points out of this next one. Casey Jones, their head coach, in his interview with us, Tony, just really optimistic, high-energy yeah. guy. You know, he wants to keep things positive. He said, I'm really happy we're starting on the road. It can be a good bonding experience. And if you walk out of here with three points or possibly, you know, four points after the weekend, well, that's a huge accomplishment for this program. Uh, he was a blast to talk to earlier in the week. You could just see the energy that he exudes. Very candid with, with us about his team. We talked earlier about how he kind of talks to potential transfers that might come in and impact the program. Mm -hmm. And you can see why, if you are transferring, you'd want to play for him. He really gave off a great vibe that he's going to try to help you. He said his job is to develop you from Sunday to Thursday. Yeah. But Friday and Saturday, he's paid to win games. Yeah. I loved that quote. I think a lot of players would appreciate the uh, the honesty and upfrontness to it as well. Yeah. Well, I think what he wanted to convey was, you know, I'm not sitting you because I don't like you. I'm sitting you because I think I have a better chance of winning without you in the lineup. And you know, sometimes coaches will watch that. Sometimes coaches have to make those tough decisions. That was Granis again with a shot. Yeah, Granis had a good second period. Yeah. Taylor then fires one from a sharp angle. Bischel able to see it through some traffic. And it brings us to a stoppage at the midway point of the second period. Notre Dame has their first lead of the weekend. It comes courtesy of the freshman, Jaden Davis. His first collegiate start, his first collegiate goal, and the Irish are out in front. Well, the head coach for Clarkson, Casey Jones, is in his 13th year behind the bench for the Golden Knights. But this is a look back to the late 80s, Steve. How about four years at Cornell? where he played college hockey. He's carved out a nice coaching career for himself since, but there's some great images from the late 80s when he played for a Cornell team they're gonna have to deal with this year in the ECAC. And you know who he played with back then? A, a former teammate of mine, Joe Newen, yeah. who uh, we got a chance to talk to him about, and he said, one of the best shooters that I've ever played with. But as a player, and I, and I read a bit of a scouting report on Casey Jones, high energy guy, a good penalty killer, not overly big, but uh, gave it his all, gave 110% every shift. A lot of times, those are the guys that make their way through the coaching ranks, too. Yeah, they don't have all the skill in the world. They make it there on, you know, guts and determination. And, yeah, they oftentimes turn into the best coaches. Longtime assistant at Ohio State before getting the job with Clarkson. Now in his 13th season, is, here's that freshman line again. Davis looking back door for Ali, who had the pressure on it. Davis, Fleming, and Ali have very possibly been the best Notre Dame line here in this second period. They're on the fourth line as Janicki intercepts and sends it down low for Ali. Well, they're youthful enthusiasm, and they're bringing the energy. 
Here's Bavaro trying to play make from the blue line. Drops it off for Danny Nelson. Another freshman wrists one, and Roden's able to make the stop. Nelson right back on the puck, though. Now the top line is out there for Notre Dame. Nelson with Janicki as he's harassing Taylor, who does get it out to the neutral zone. But the Irish bring the pressure right away. Bavaro up ahead for Silinov. Back for Bavaro. Here comes Notre Dame. Bavaro wrists one that Roden's able to fend off. Golden Knights bring it back the other direction. Puck is loose in the neutral zone, taken by Beck. Here's Noah Beck into the offensive end, shoots from a sharp angle, ricochets out towards the line. Clarkson's in need of a lengthy shift in the offensive zone here as the ice has been tilted in the direction of the Irish here in the second 20. Yeah, they need a momentum changer. And Noah Beck, you know, he can provide that. Haven't seen him or noticed him as much in game number two. Game number one, he was very solid. And Coach Casey Jones talked about him, a draft pick of the St. Louis Blues, big body at 6'3". But I uh, haven't really noticed the big defenseman on the back end in this game. Yeah, 23 points last year. ECAC Defenseman of the Month in November tells you how good you have to be if you're going to win that award at some point throughout the year. You're right, Beck hasn't even had the impact so far tonight that you'd expect for a guy that averaged about a point every other game last year. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. Casey Jones, head coach Jones, thought he was going to be better this year, and he, he very well could be. He said he got real serious in the weight room. He's gained some weight. He's stronger. And you know, sometimes you just, as a senior, you see that progression, especially from sophomore to junior and then junior to senior. And, you know, he talked about working with them from Sunday through Thursday. And then, but he said they've got to evolve as players. Yeah. Uh, most players that come through the door are good players. Then it's on them to get better. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where he sees his team getting better individuals just improving year to year. And that's your point on Beck. Only played 20 games as a freshman and then 22 points as a sophomore, 23 as a junior. has become a real reliable force for the Golden Knights this year. As they have the puck in their own zone, approaching seven minutes to play. Just one goal so far in this contest. It was scored by Jaden Davis, the fourth line freshman centerman for Notre Dame. Cole Knubel, second line freshman centerman. Backhands it in deep as Justin Janicki Goes in hot pursuit. Carter Slagger backhands it down low, looking for Janicki. Puck hops high in the air, just behind the net. It was and yeah, I'm sorry, it's got it. Yeah, it, it was gloved, so that's uh. why Slagger doesn't want to touch it. So he waited, and I guess Clarkson <laughs> did not touch that. Yeah, Justin Janicki gloved it over to the corner. So any glove pass, if it's not inside your own zone, gets whistled down, and that's exactly what happened. The little game of chicken there, in the corner. And finally, they do blow the play dead and bring the puck out of the Clarkson end and into neutral ice. You know, we showed Andy Slaggart earlier up in the booth and Carter Slaggart obviously on the ice. I don't know if we mentioned the number 25 he wears. Yeah. Is the same number that his dad, Andy Slaggart, wore at war oh so many years ago with the Fighting Irish. Had a chance to talk to Carter a couple weeks before, and you could see his face lit up when he talked about getting to wear the same number that his dad wore when he played here. Again, Graham Slaggart, the oldest of the three Slaggarts, played here a couple years ago. Now Landon's the captain, and Carter gets to wear his dad's jersey. Solak Bakic was hogging that jersey for a long time, That's 25 right. for right. Notre Dame, and now Carter comes in and takes it over. And was his dad a football player at Notre Dame? Yes. Yeah. Bakic played football here. You've got the Janikis, whose father Curtis played hockey here. Now we were talking to Jeff Jackson, too, and, and he pointed out the Janikis and the Slaggards, called them legacy players. Yeah. They're just kind of an extra added motivation for those guys that play at the same school that their dad played at before them. And it's not nepotism either. Carter played at the U.S. National Training and Development Program for a couple of years. And very uh, highly recruited player by a bunch of universities. And, of course, there was no question in his mind that he was going to come to Notre Dame. <laughs> Might have been awkward if yeah. they let him go to Michigan or something like that. <laughs> he would have been disowned by the family. <laughs> Five and a half to go here as the freshman lines after it again. This is Ali in the corner. Fleming gets to the puck. Ali along the wall. Good feed to Bavaro out of the blue line. Sends it back for Fleming. 
Into the corner he goes, working around Kalen Taylor. Back for Rivaro. Across for Mastro Domenico. Shot deflected wide. Behind the net, Fleming. Out towards the line with a delayed penalty coming up. Bischel will race towards the bench. And the Irish will get the extra attacker on here and go six on five. Now that freshman line again pressure the whole time they're on the ice. And they have drawn a penalty. Oh, good work by them. Master Domenico tried to navigate his way across the line then lost it. It's touched up, but it'll result in another power play opportunity for the Irish. Looks like a interference call against Sigur Sigerson. Watch number 14. Yeah, right in front of the ice there. Just took care of his man. He didn't have the puck. That is, well, could have been cross-checking. They call Ooh. it interference all day long. That's Jaden Davis paying the price. There's the captain McFall talking things over with the referee. Steve, it's the fourth line again. All those freshmen that draw the penalty here as well. They've really been sharp here in the second. Well, and it's given some, some confidence. You know, you score a goal and then you're getting a regular shift. And we should point out they are playing against a line against the Clarkson uh, Golden Knights. A couple of those guys are freshmen. Yeah. And Sigurdsson and Russell. Barkholtz, the sophomore on that line. So... You know, it's kind of a, a, a freshman face-off, and they have certainly controlled the play when they've been on the ice. So the Irish get a chance to go on their third power play of the night. Nobody has scored a power play goal so far this weekend. Notre Dame was 0 for 4 last night. And they're 0 for 2 to start this night's contest. Puck is driven around. Bavaro's at the line, held it in for a moment, but it's taken right back by Romano. Anthony Romano, senior forward, into the offensive end, lost the puck. Moynihan did well, but take it from him, and now the captain, Landon Slagger, will carry it out with speed. Comes across the line, off to Knubel. Backhanded for Bavaro. Takes his time, across for a one-timer from Moynihan. Roden made the stop. The rebound was loose along the side of the cage, and Slaggert's able to track it down. Like the play, shot from the half boards, and then they got to the rebound. I think it was Trevor Janicki who got the rebound. Plenty of time as Bavaro sends it across for Knubel. He takes a peek out towards the line, out of the reach of Bavaro. And importantly, Clarkson can get four or at least three fresh penalty killers, now four, onto the ice. That was a good stick by Richardson. Just kind of redirected that pass to the high man on the point. 40 seconds left on the advantage. Second power play line out for Notre Dame to go up against this second penalty killing unit for Clarkson. Here's Ryan Seedham. Transfer from Harvard has the puck. Sends it across and gets it right back. Janicki in the slot. Across for a one-timer from Fleming. Didn't connect cleanly on it. Just 15 seconds remain on the power play. Seedham across. Nelson's one-time drive. Looks like it might have been intentionally wide. Didn't connect with anybody. Back to it. This time he'll wind it up and shoot. Great block by the captain, McFall. Puck is loose. Janicki's got it. Final seconds, see him across, another one-timer from Fleming, whistles wide of the cage. Some good opportunities on the power play, but nothing hits the back of the net, and it's still 1-0. And a big block for McFall, who looked like he was injured on that play. The blast almost went off the back of his leg, but he stays out there, and those, four of those guys anyway, tired penalty killers. And now, Tucker doesn't have a stick, so it's... Five on four and a half right now. Janicki weaving his way around Tucker. Tried to draw a holding call. Nothing doing. And they keep playing. Yeah, that was a hold all day long. So you can see Tucker right there. Right side of the screen. Does not have a stick. 17 for Clarkson. Puckville comes out to center. He'll speed to the bench and look to get off. Rickwood comes on. Janicki whiffed on the shot. Taylor takes a spill in the corner. Puck is loose. Here's Davis who tried to get the puck to his forehand for a quick shot. It's taken away by Rickwood. Just like the end of the first period, some moments here at the end of the second that are probably making the coaching staffs on each side to lose some hair. Well, yeah, and especially for Notre Dame because they get that second goal. It's just such a huge relief. Puck comes out to center. Zach Pluszynski being worked on near the Clarkson bench. He'll flip it into the opposite corner with less than 90 seconds to go. In the second, Silinov circles the net with his head up. Across it goes. Pluszynski's shot didn't get through. 
And it's cleared out. Yeah, that was a block by Taylor. Another block by the Golden Knights. And they have done a lot of that this weekend. Both teams already have exceeded their blocks from last night. It was 12 and 11, respectively. They're at that number already here in the second. Here's Eric Ciccolini tried to speed his way into the offensive end. Had it taken away. Moynihan for Notre Dame sends it up for Ali. It's backhanded through center where Rick, Rickwood will chip it in deep and the Golden Knights will make a change. Michael Master Domenico gets it ahead for Moynihan, looking across for Knubel. Puck rolls into the corner. Slagger back on the ice. Backhands it towards the line, chipped out towards center where Bavaro is waiting for the Irish. I can't remember the last time Clarkson had a shot. They've got 13 on the night, which isn't great, but boy, it just seems like the last five minutes have been played in the Golden Knights zone. The Irish have really tilted things in their favor, but only one goal to show for it to this point as Bavaro fires one that never got through. Final seconds here. Romano will skate it into his own end and just kill off the final seconds. To your point, Steve, it is 1-0 Notre Dame, but Clarkson probably happy to get out of this second period trailing by just one. Yeah, they were on the ropes a good five, six minutes towards the end of that second period, and they have to feel fortunate. It's just a one-goal game still, and really Notre Dame carrying the play for most of that period. Irish and the Golden Knights will head into their respective dressing rooms and talk over the final 20 minutes. During the intermission, you have a chance to hear Tony Dungy sit down with 49ers running back Christian McCaffrey ahead of tonight's Sunday night football affair, and then we'll recap the second period in which Notre Dame took the lead. Irish have the lead thanks to the freshman Jaden Davis. It's Notre Dame in front, 1-0 after two. 1-0 the score between Notre Dame and Clarkson after two periods of play. It was scoreless after one, and Notre Dame has since taken a 1-0 advantage alongside Steve Conroy, Tony Simeone. Happy that you're with us. Should be a pretty fun third. Steve, we said it was a pretty even first 20 minutes. I thought Notre Dame, especially after they grabbed that opening goal, really dominated the second half of that second period. Yeah, they carried the play. Obviously, the goal energized the bench. It energized the building, and it got them skating a little better and as a result they kept Clarkson kind of hemmed into their own zone let's look at some of the action from that second 20 minutes what you're gonna see here first is I think what Clarkson has done great all week they blocked shots seven in each of the two periods for 14 total already this is what's keeping them in the game right now yeah that's McFall the captain sacrificing his body uh, Noah Beck uh, did a real good job of blocking some shots that was a forward here's Beck blocking a shot it's all about body positioning getting between you and the shooter and for the Fighting Irish, uh, that rookie line, that freshman line has been really good. You know, they create the turnover. Jaden Davis actually created his own turnover, knocked a couple of Golden Knights down. He takes it to the hoop himself, and that shot right from the faceoff dot, it had eyes. It was literally up over the shoulder, and from this angle, you'll see just inside the post, just under the crossbar, perfect placement. And Davis with his first goal as a member of the Fighting Irish. Got to love the reaction on the bench, too. That's a group of guys that know someone just scored their first collegiate goal. You see the numbers here. It was pretty even after one. It's tilted slightly towards the Irish, of course, with the most important number at the bottom. I asked you after one what the key was for Notre Dame because they were trailing on the weekend. Let's look towards the third now. Clarkson trailing going into the third. What's the biggest key for them in the final 20? Yeah, good question. They've got to start taking some chances. They, they've been playing a very safe game, but for the most part, it's either been tied or they've had the lead over this weekend. Now they're behind. Now they've got to take some chances. I'm looking for their defense to get involved. Heard a lot about Noah Beck and his offensive capabilities. Haven't seen much from him in this series. Watch for big number 18 to be jumping in from the back end. Should be a really interesting final 20 minutes in what's been a very close weekend between Notre Dame and Clarkson. Third period coming up after this. The third period between Notre Dame and Clarkson. Some Clarkson fans in attendance tonight watching. Figure one of the Clarkson fans that will be watching at home is Emmett Laramie. This is a guy that was actually named to the roster, 11 years old, thanks to Team Impact. He had a signing day where he signed with Clarkson. He even has a roster page, Steve. They've got him as number six, you see right there. Uh, the story on Emmett when he had his signing day press conference in August is that Team Impact, which is a national nonprofit, they pair certain 
young individuals with teams across the country. Mm -hmm. Emmett was able to sign. He was diagnosed earlier with Crohn's disease, but we talked to Casey Jones about what Emmett has meant to the program, how much the team loves having him around for as many events and activities. They truly treat him like he's one of their own at Clarkson. Yeah, and it helps his self-confidence, and Casey Jones said it helps the guys. Mm. He said, I handed it off to them, and sometimes you forget about the human side of things when you're involved in sports 24-7. Uh, it gives Emmett a ton of worth. It gives you know, these players a ton of worth, too. They think they're doing good. And he said, this is the thing that stuck out to me. He said, if you're ever feeling bad about yourself or you're feeling down, go do community service. Uh -huh. It'll do a world of good. And uh, it has certainly done a world of good in the life of Emmett and I think in the lives of these young student athletes. Yeah, that was a great point that he brought up. We've talked to Jeff Jackson over the years, too, about how Notre Dame is so involved in the local community. Uh, they, they do excellent work. Of course, they've worked with Rudy Chapman in the past, who's really kind of an honorary member of their team as well, who's battling illness here locally. But yeah. I thought it was so neat when I was just getting ready for this weekend to flip on the roster, start looking through names, and I said, wait a second now. That looks Number like he... six looks a little young to be <laughs> suiting up. But they got yeah. him on the page, and that's pretty neat. Oh, good shot there from Drew Bavaro. Uh, and the other thing that Casey Jones said, he says, I'll come down to the dressing room, and there Emmett will be playing video games. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's just one of the guys. They really embraced him. As Silinoff sends it in front, and Danny Nelson has his first career goal. Well, you go to the net and good things happen, and good things have been happening for young Danny Nelson this whole weekend. And Silinoff, Silinoff does a real good job protecting the puck on his backhand, but then throwing it back in front. And he breaks the check of Noah Beck. And Noah Beck's a big dude, 6'3", almost 200 pounds, but he outbattles him. He gets position on him, and that's the key. Get inside the blue paint, get inside that defender, and he does. And that's how that goal happened. That is a huge goal for the Fighting Irish to start the third period. So Nelson, the second round pick of the Islanders, had not scored yet this weekend, Steve, but you could feel his presence both nights. He's been really active, highlighted him in the open, the six shots he had last night. Tonight he's been wreaking havoc, and now he finally is on the score sheet. And now Notre Dame's got the first two-goal lead of the weekend. Really, Clarkson got it with an empty netter last night. Right, right. And now this is going to open up the game and kind of force their hand. Well, it's funny with Nelson, you know, five seconds into his first shift, he had a shot on net. He had three shots after the first period. You mentioned the six shots at the end of the game. He was a beast in the face-off circle. Uh, he was physical. Huge hit on the captain, McFall, halfway through the hockey game. Uh, He's made a name for himself over Saturday and Sunday here in South Bend. Time Fisher shot wide. See how Clarkson responds here. They already trailed 1-0 coming into the second. It's been tough sledding tonight. The team last night that picked up a couple of goals off of miscues from Notre Dame. And Strand plays it for Pluszynski. That shot did not get through. Right back to Strand, though. Now he winds one up and shoots it wide. Here is Fisher. You know, freshman defenseman pinching down. Ali is onto the puck. And as the freshman forward line is out there going to work for Notre Dame. Puck comes back into the Irish end. Jake Boltman settles it, sends it ahead for Ali. He'll skate it into the offensive zone, throw on the brakes in the corner, send it out for Danny Nelson's brother, Henry, who shoots a puck that ricochets into the opposite corner. Here's Talon Sigurdsson. Back it comes through center ice. Carter Rose whacks it in deep. Bischel will play it behind his net. Did not play it cleanly. Had to track it down and is able to get it out of harm's way and back to the neutral zone. Kalen Taylor, Oceanside, California native, drives it around, comes all the way back into the Clarkson zone. Ali's the first one to get there for Notre Dame. He'll stop along the goal line. Back out for Nelson's drive. Goes way wide. Comes all the way back into the Irish zone and Drew Bavaro will circle back for it. It was good speed by Ali because that was the end of a shift. And he makes it all the way down the ice to get to that puck first. And the net gets knocked off its moorings. So we get the whistle. 
Well, this goal, Steve, look at how it started here. I thought this was impressive from Silanov. Oh, yeah. The keep in just inside the blue line. And so often you see teams thinking they're going to break it out, so they're thinking offense, they're in transition, and then now they open up defensively. And Silanov did a real good job not only keeping it in, but then getting it to young Danny Nelson. And I like the fact he went to his backhand because you can pre protect the puck a lot better when you're on your offside. You know, you present the puck if you want to shoot it, but if you take it to your backhand, chances are you're going to pass it. That's exactly what he did. Nelson, of course, getting credit for the goal, but Silanoff, you saw there, keeping it in. He's a guy who's in his senior year now. Had 18 points as a sophomore, otherwise as a freshman and junior. Didn't crack double digits in points. He's playing with Nelson and Trevor Janicki this year. You figure Grant Silanoff could be poised for a big offensive production year for the Irish. Well, absolutely. Native of Cedar Rapids, Minnesota. And you mentioned a senior. He said at 5'11", 178. He just seems and plays bigger than that, yeah. which is good. He's, he's an active player, and he likes to get involved. You go to the tough areas. And, you know, that, that's a good sign for the Fighting Irish. That's the top line you saw right there. Still enough with Nelson and Janicki on the bench right now as the second line is out there. Knubel, Slagger with Moynihan. Clarkson now. They need a goal to get them... Ooh. A sense of belief here. Almost had it right there on a wraparound try that came off of the stick of Ryan Richardson. Well, he had an opportunity because you know, one of the few times Bischel was not tight to the post getting across. And Richardson just couldn't curl it around into that open side. He just fired that one wide of the net as well. Yeah, Gardner, Tucker, and Richardson top line for Clarkson as that one takes a funky hop off the wall. And that top line for Clarkson's been quiet tonight. As Janicki speeds his way into the offensive end. Here's Trevor Janicki. Tried to pull it to his forehand. Couldn't get a clean shot off. No good rush up ice. Let's get bull rush because he is a big body. And sometimes he can just back people off with his size and speed. But he showed good hands there. Stick handling through the legs of the defender. Judson up ahead for Mons. He had the... Two goals last night for Clarkson that effectively gave him the win. Then the empty netter came from Kalen Taylor, who had the puck there for a moment. Now Janicki has it. Walks his way in and shoots a puck to the flex towards the corner. Sometimes this is the best defense for the Fighting Irish is their offense. Just keep it going. Don't back off. Don't go into a prevent defense type of zone structure. Just, you know, keep going offensively. You've got the puck. They don't. And they come again. Justin Janicki going to work against the captain, Dustin McFall. They're tied up behind the play. Well, they're really battling behind the net. All the arms stay down, though. Play continues as the puck comes to center ice. It has not been an overly physical, although there you see a big hit. <laughs> and McFall saw it coming, so he got ready for that Justin Janicki hit. But it hasn't, you know, it's not a typical Big Ten conference game where you, <laughs> you see a lot of chirping and you see a lot of... You know, bad blood after whistles. McFall knows he's coming to watch him the reverse hit. Janicki doesn't go down, he just gets stood up a little bit. It's night two. I always think night two, Steve, they got familiar last <laughs> night. There's a few things that probably carry over to game two, and it yeah. starts to get a little bit chippier there as the night goes along. One thing I can tell you is hockey players have long memories, <laughs> and it might have happened yesterday, but uh, you want to settle the score. And sometimes, you know, you can't do it right away because the ref's looking. And then, you know, oh, okay. the guy might not be on the ice for a while. So then, you know, you just take his number and you store it in the back of your head and then payback is uh, a dish best served cold, right? <laughs> Plenty of places to serve it out there that are cold. <laughs> I, I, I like that admission from you that you're keeping an eye on when the officials are looking oh, in yeah. the other direction for when you can exact your revenge. Okay. Well, back when I played, it was a little easier because there was one referee on the ice. Two linesmen, right. just right. one ref, and it was, you know, a heck of a lot easier. I think it's good they got two out there now. There'd be a whole lot of missed calls people would be complaining about. Barkholtz walks in, shoots, and Bischel fends it off. I like I like how Bischel just punched that to the corner. You know, if you make that save and it comes out front, that's a dangerous rebound. But he is so good at placing rebounds. And Jeff Jackson has talked about that. Jeff Jackson, of course, a former goaltender back in the day. And uh, he can appreciate subtle little plays like that from his goalie. 
Oh, long shot deflected off the stick of Moynihan that time. Almost friendly fire in on Bischel. Mm. Did go wide. And the sheet is still clean for Ryan Bischel. Has not seen a ton of shots. So far, just 15 from the Golden Knights. He stopped all 15 after a 22 save performance last night. And again, the two goals that came before the empty netter were both off the stick of Mons. Both came off of turnovers that put him in a vulnerable spot. So to this point, nearly halfway through the third period of game two, Bischel's been just like the guy we saw last year, has not given up anything cheap so far this weekend. Yeah, Bischel's been great. And you mentioned the two goals. One was a clear-cut breakaway. The other one was, you know, a three-on-two slash two-on-one. And, you know, there's nothing he could do on it. So this is the type of performance you want from your goaltender. Give us a chance to win. He gave him a chance to win last night, even though they were being outplayed at times. Now, tonight, Notre Dame is outplaying uh, the Golden Knights, but he's still making the big save when he needs it. Just to put a to put a bow on Bischel, he had a 931 save percentage last season. We talked about the penalty killing woes of the Irish. They gave up 31 power play goals. Other than the power play, Bischel's save percentage against the rest of the time the puck was on the ice was 944 last year. So I mean, it's That's just it's just unbelievable what he's been able to do when the deck has not been stacked against him. That, that's an amazing stat, you know, because he take the power play out, and, and typically shots on the power play are a lot more dangerous, so the higher percentage of those shots going in. So you take that out, you take, you know, basically five on five, four on four play, even play, and a 945 save percentage, that is outstanding. Big 10 goaltender of the year was in the running for Mike Richter reward. You figure he's going to be right there again. This time last year, after their first two games, you know, they, they gave up five goals in each of the first two contests last year. So the numbers took a while to come back down to earth. And even after all of that, it was still a 931 percentage on the year as Carter Slagger backhands one towards net. Roden is able to fight it off, and it comes back out the other way. Good back pressure there from Carter Slagger. He started the rush the other way, and he was the first one back to help create that turnover. Mons had it in a dangerous spot for a moment. Couldn't quite settle the puck, but he has it once more. Mon sends it through the slot. Nobody home. Justin Janicki has it, and he'll take time. Skating the puck free out of his own zone. Taken back by Eric Ciccolini, though. He drops it off for Trey Taylor. He'll send it up for Mons. Right back for a streaking Taylor, just out of his reach. It's backhanded all the way into the Clarkson zone. They say it's tipped, so no icing. Still haven't seen the defenseman getting involved in the rush. Now, there's still 10 minutes to go, but, you know, the Golden Knights at some point have to start taking some some gambles, you know, jumping a, a D up on the play, having them be like a fourth forward. But as to this point, they're still playing it pretty conservatively. Yeah, you're right. 15 shots through 50 minutes, not where they want to be. Last season per game, they averaged 27. So they're well behind that pace so far tonight. Yeah, and listen, we don't want to make excuses for them, but Ayrton Martino out of the lineup. That's right. Good He's point. a big part of their their team. Goslin did not play last night. He is still out. He is supposed to be a big part of their team. And Moberg, the young kid from Sweden, you know, still in limbo as to whether uh, when he will play this year. No, I think it's a great point, Steve. Martino and Goslin again combined for over 70 points last year. These are big time players. Goslin. Led the team in face-off percentage at 56, was top 15 in the country in that mark. Now face-offs tonight are dead even at 22, but that can provide you a little bit of an edge. They're without two of their big-time performers. And the hit on Martino, if you're just joining us, it came last night, a two-minute boarding call. But when you just take a guy like that out of the lineup, it then forces everything else to kind of shuffle behind it as well. Well, I remember him talking about Martino. He says he's just an elite skater, mm -hmm. an elite passer, and if you get open, he will find you. So, uh, you know, that's the kind of guy they could certainly use right now. <laughs> could really use his offense now as less than 10 minutes to play in regulation. Notre Dame working on a 2-0 lead thanks to goals from two freshmen. Jaden Davis and Danny Nelson have their first collegiate goals tonight. That's the difference in the contest. There's Landon Slagger, the captain for Notre Dame, tried to hold it in the offensive end, taken back by Charlie Russell. No pirouette, spin back. Now fire a shot from a wide angle. Bischel 
able to see it cleanly and stop it with ease. Eight minutes, 39 seconds remaining in regulation time, and the Irish have a 2-0 lead. The first career goal of Danny Nelson has them in front by a pair. Well, Notre Dame has a 2-0 lead here with 8.39 left in the third period. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. Band in full force. Great atmosphere here at the Compton Family Ice Arena as always, Steve. So fun to come back for another season, and especially as the season goes along and get those big rivalries in the Big Ten. Uh, this place is going to be rocking throughout the year. Yeah, Ryan Seedham even mentioned that last night after the game. And Ryan Seedham assisted on the lone goal that the Fighting Irish had. But he said just to hear the band, uh, just to hear the fans get into it, he said that's going to be a huge advantage this year. There's Mons working his way in. His backhand is kicked out wide, and Slaggart will try to get it out and not get it to center, though. Here is Seedham with the puck. He's the transfer you talked about after a few years with Harvard. And I can confirm, I mean, Bright Landry Hockey Center is a great facility out in Boston, but it's not as big as this building. Mm -hmm. And so, as you mentioned, with Sita mentioning the environment, certainly a different kind of atmosphere, and especially, again, when those rivals show up as Ciccolini fires on Bischel. Uh, he's going to be in for even a newer, more invigorating well, experience when that rolls around. And the Big Ten, as good as it was last year, I think is better this year. Watch this. Here's Silinoff looking for the third goal. Shot it wide. He set up that goal by Danny Nelson. A real good job on his off wing again. This time he decides to shoot it, brings it to the inside. He gets off the shot quickly. Just a little wide. Fisher takes a shoulder in front of the Clarkson bench. We've talked plenty about Clarkson in the being preseason fourth in the ECAC. Big Ten is stacked this year. I mean, every Big Ten team, and there's seven of them, they all got votes in the opening poll of the season. Yep. All but one are in the top 20. Yep. You've got three in the top 10 to start the year. It is going to be a slog to get through the Big Ten regular season for every team. Wisconsin's going to be a lot better. Mm -hmm. and a new coach there, and he's brought some players over from his program. Adam Nightingale, who we talked last year with Michigan State, They've added a goalie of Trey Augustine, I believe is his name. They're so improved. Really East good. Lansing, yeah. yeah. So uh, Michigan and Minnesota kind of always at the top. You can expect them. Yep. That's why sometimes these games early in the season can be so critical to postseason. Who knows how Clarkson is going to figure in the ECAC? They're figure, you know, they're picked towards the top third of the conference. We see it every year, Steve. When we're in this building in January and February, and we're talking about where's everyone going to land. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know the Big Ten and the ECAC are going to be good, then it's going to come down to how did you handle your business outside of the conference. Exactly. So getting a win for Notre Dame tonight could prove really valuable if they look up three months from now and Clarkson's in the top ten. And here's the coaches' poll from uh, the preseason. Minnesota, of course, and Michigan right up there. Michigan State, yeah, I'm a believer in that team too. But yeah. then it's Notre Dame. I think Wisconsin might be a sneaky team this year. Uh, it's Martindale, the new coach there, coached at University of Min uh, Min Minnesota Mankato. Um, yeah, they'll be good. They'll Crazy, be real good. Craziest thing, you see that there. Ohio State picked the finish last. In the preseason USCHO poll, they were 13th in the country. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, again, it's a guess. Everyone's just guessing in the offseason. It'll uh, become more clear as the year goes along. But that just, I mean, and again, it's a seven-team league, but not a lot of teams pick to finish last in their conference are going to find themselves in the top 15 of the preseason poll as there's a penalty behind the play. And not what Clarkson wanted. Clarkson penalty on number 21, against two minutes, elbowing in direct contact to the head. Contact to the head. And I don't know that it is a five minute major. I think it'll just be a two minute penalty. Yeah, Granis in the box right now. And they've called it elbowing. Okay. And not a good time, as you said, for the penalty. Not only does it put him on the kill, but it's two minutes you can't then really be on your front foot. And that's going to take the clock presumably under four minutes by the time they get back to full strength. Right. And, and, you know, interesting, Jeff Jackson called over that power play. He just wants to make sure they're not taking any, you know, unnecessary chances opening up. If you got a shot, take it. But 
you know, if you're a defenseman and a guy's coming out of you, don't put it into his pads and have a breakaway going the other way. Jeff Jackson talking over the associate coach, Paul Pooley. So, you know, they'll, they'll be fine just to get through this power play with control and maybe a couple of shots, but they just don't want to give Clarkson anything going the other way. Power play was 0 for 4 last night. This is their fourth chance tonight. It has not generated any goals as this puck comes back into the Irish zone. But as you said, <laughs> the emphasis is probably on keeping it clean and nothing silly to either give Clarkson a shorthanded chance or possibly get this thing back to four on four skating. As Nelson has the puck along the wall. Done a nice job killing it. Down it goes for Bischel once more. And Nelson just kind of ran out of room. You know, there was no... You want to try and create space and time, and he had no space, no time, and an easy clear for the Golden Knights. Fleming hands it off for Janicki. Now the Irish go to work. Seat him. Over for Nelson. Ooh, that pass tipped up out towards center. Seat him being tracked down from behind, almost taken by Jesse Tucker. Uh, I imagine that was what they talked about not wanting to do in that meeting you referred to. Kind of a soft pass from Nelson. And that was, well, watch this. It's a good shot by Janicki, and eventually Roden's able to smother it. There's Nelson right there trying to get to that rebound. But Nelson tried to pass it to Seedham. It got deflected, and I've seen that work and turn into a breakaway. You deflect the pass, get it by the defenseman, and you're off to the races. So, yeah, I'm sure the coaching staff will talk to Danny Nelson when he gets back. Here's the pass. He walks up the boards. And right here, back, that, that's just a lazy pass. If it's hard, maybe he gets there, but you know, the player who deflected that, I believe it was, is that? It was Campbell? Tucker. Yeah. yeah, Jesse Tucker got the piece on okay. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah he, he could have been off to the races, so. You know, that, that's how you learn as a freshman. I was going to say, Steve, that, that looked to me, having never played, like the kind of pass that worked at the last level that won't work here, right? <laughs> and it takes a while to learn that, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah, he was at the U.S. National Training Development Program. They're playing against 16, 17, maybe 18-year-old kids. Well, they're U18, so, uh, yeah, you're playing against men now. There's some guys that you're up against are 24 years old. Oh, There's the third goal of the night. Landon Slagger in tight gives the Irish a 3-0 lead. Power play goal for Landon Slagger, and he talked about getting better in front of the net. And that's exactly what he does here. I like how he uses his body to back out, protect the puck, and then go upstairs with it. Now watch him, he's behind the net right now. Watch the right side of your screen. He'll get it, dishes it off, he'll get it back, and then there he is, that, that quick move. Brings it to his backhand from the forehand, and then upstairs over Roden. Actually, the first one was stopped. It was the rebound goal that he got. Two goals in two games for Landon Slagger. How about those hands? So quick it looked like. But I think what you just mentioned there, Steve, is the key. Two goals in two nights for Landon Slagger. Had just seven last year. Took him so long to break through offensively. The fact they've got their captain humming in the first weekend, that has to do a ton, not just for his confidence, but really the entire team now going forward. Well, yeah, you feed off that. And we saw it yesterday after he scored the goal. Just the jump to his step, the you know the the extra speed he seemed to gain, and you know, this win, and it looks like it will be a win, will go a long way for the Fighting Irish. It's been a great bounce back performance by Notre Dame tonight after they lost the opener. That ball, that puck is tipped wide of Bischel. Pluszynski's after it with three and a half minutes to go, and the Irish working on a three nothing advantage. Well, there you see Landon Slager's production each of his first three years playing college hockey. Great first year, even better second year, but last year, you know, a little bit of a mystery. And, and he really struggled early in the year, just 13 points. And Tony, I remember talking to Jeff Jackson about it, and he said he just played so much hockey over the 21, 22, 22, 23 season, whether a couple of World Junior Championships, I think it was a development camp in there that he attended. Uh, that's just a lot of hockey for a youngster. A guy who's still growing and developing. And maybe this extra long off season was good for him. I mean, he recommitted to working out. He worked on a few things to score more goals. And 
And yeah, so far it's bearing some fruit. Well, you saw those numbers too, and you don't want to say he took a step back, but just the production wasn't there where they thought it would be. He's a guy when you bring him in, third round pick of the Blackhawks, and you saw the trend year one to year two. You just figured it's going to go on a linear line straight up. At least we're only two days into the season, but this is a lot more like what they expected last season, and now they're getting it here in his senior campaign as he's captaining the group. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you'll see it a sophomore year, and they call it the sophomore slump. You, you come in, and in every game, you're, you're just on edge and you're ready. And then you take your foot off the gas a little bit your sophomore year. Well, you know, maybe that's what happened last year for Landon. I, I, I still believe Jeff Jackson had to say, though, he was just a fatigued athlete. He was really tired, you know, the international travel, all the hockey he played. And uh, he really made a commitment to working out, to working in his game, which is just like we saw there, front of the net, you know, bulldog the puck to the front of the net, quick hands. We know he's got great speed, so he's going to create some separation at times, too. And let's not forget about his shot. That, the shot last night, that goal, the lone goal they scored, that was an excellently placed shot. This, of course, is the opening weekend series, and then both of these teams, again, we've talked about how important the conference season is going to be for them, but Notre Dame is going to go on the road next week to play their lone conference road game of the year. Jeff Jackson taking a little extra time. It looks like Clarkson has pulled their net minder, so he just wants to make sure everyone knows their responsibility, and you're talking about the upcoming schedule at RIT, but then it's Boston University. And uh, Ooh, the number one ranked Boston University team. Clarkson's, sorry, Clarkson's got Penn State after this too, so it doesn't get any easier here in the non-conference for them. Okay, so empty net. Keep an eye on this as Janicki has the puck through center. It's six on five right now. Clarkson has it with the net empty. And Taylor has it in his own end. Here's Judson across the line. Carries it into the offensive zone. Mons, who had both goals last night. As Beck fires a one-timer, goes wide. Mon centers the feed. This shot goes up and over the bar. Off the stick that time of Taylor. Yeah, good deflect. I think it was Cedar maybe came in to use the stick to deflect that shot. 2.40 left. Beck, big one-timer. Oh, deflected off of Taylor towards net. Bischel kept it out. Tucker with a diving attempt. It's cleared out the other way. Not enough steam on this one. Beck will track it down. Good clear by the Fighting Irish off the glass. Always tough to keep in and almost ended up scoring a goal off the carom. Here's the captain, Dustin McFall. Gives it to Eric Ciccolini. He'll speed his way in. Long range shot, wide of the net. Comes all the way around. McFall backhands it. Down low it goes. Puck comes out towards the line. McFall once again sends it in deep. Damon Gardner. Back hands it around for Beck. Down low, good centering pass that time. Quick shot popped high in the air. Nobody nope. sees it. Backhanded try by McFall, and it went just wide. He had an open net, too, because Bischel did not know where the puck was. McFall just got the backhand on it, but ended up deflecting wide. Uh, nobody saw that puck because McFall couldn't get it on frame. If he could, it would have gone home. Ciccolini, across it comes. Beck. Fakes on the one-timer. Good block that time by the freshman, Nelson. Ciccolini shot saved. Beck, instead of shooting, centers this time. Looking for Rickwood, whose shot didn't get home. And again, Clarkson still has it in the offensive end, but they're running out of time, trailing by three. Everybody on the ice is gassed right now as this puck is shot wide. Backhanded feed this time by Gardner didn't go. Bavaro has it. He's going to try to skate it out, bank it off the glass this time. Puck's on edge. It goes down, and icing will be the call. And Notre Dame is going to have to stay with those five skaters on the ice. Yeah, I'm not sure who called the timeout last time. It might have been Clarkson. So I don't know that the Fighting Irish have any timeouts to spare. Those guys are dead tired. <laughs> And Clarkson's lined up already. They want this puck dropped right away. Clarkson could reload with fresh legs. And there you go. They wait right till the last second and call the timeout. So, yeah, 
Notre Dame did have their timeout left. Jeff Jackson using it very wisely. And I was about to say, prior to that long shift, it, we've seen Ryan Bischel handle the puck very well. He can fire a puck, too. Do you think he'd ever uh, try an opportunity in an empty net? He had an assist last year, but no goal. But I, if there was ever a time, Steve, 3-0 seems like the safest time to do it. Yeah. Now, it's hard to do when the face-off's in your own zone. Typically, it's off a dump-in. Now, off a dump-in, you know, they're coming in at you hard, but you can get behind the net and just f try and fire it right up the gut. Now, he's got the strength to do that. We've seen him clear it high and hard on a number of occasions. We've seen him put it off the glass a couple of times tonight. So just keep in mind, I mean, there's 55 seconds left, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if that's uh, a trick he's got in his repertoire that we may see tonight. Now, Steve, we talked about Notre Dame's upcoming schedule. Clarkson alluded to it. They've got Penn State coming up after this. And they've got Vermont. Merrimack look at Michigan Tech in the top 10 mm -hmm. there's there's nowhere to hide on either of these teams upcoming schedules you come right out of the cannon here in the first week of October and it doesn't stop I mean it is going to be a sprint really for four months just shows you the depth of college hockey right now there's nowhere to hide whether you're in the ECAC or the Big Ten Bischel's able to make the stop. Trevor Janicki's got it. He's going to shoot towards the empty net. This puck was deflected, so no icing. And with now just 40 seconds left, Golden Knights will retreat into their own end. Irish look to be on their way to capturing their first win of the season as Judson shoots in on Bischel. Only thing now left is whether or not the Irish can keep this scoreless for the final half minute. Here's Mons looking for his third of the weekend, and he fired it just wide. Still six on five in the final seconds. Tucker's shot comes all the way around for Judson. Back it goes for Taylor. One last chance for Mons. His pass didn't get through. That deflects into the corner, and Ryan Bischel will capture his first shutout of the season and the eighth of his career. As Notre Dame's in the win column for the first time this season. Well, Ryan Bischel had a real good weekend, even though he ended up one and one. He was outstanding in both games, better in this one, obviously. A Jaden Davis goal in the second period, I think, really turned the complexion of this hockey game. The freshman line, get it done. That's the game winner. And Ryan Bischel, you need solid goaltending throughout. He gave them solid goaltending throughout. Well, it's a split this weekend. Both teams will probably have some stuff to work on. Also, both teams probably happy they got a win out of the opening weekend. That's going to do it for us, for my broadcast partner, Steve Conroy, producer Derek Coleman, director Doug Thompson, Tony Simeone, saying we'll talk to you in two weeks when number one Boston University is in town. Should be a blast two weeks from now on Peacock. The Irish have their first win of the season.